Beginning Chapter 44, LBJ. The new president was big, taller than six feet three inches. He had big bones, big ears, a big nose, big hands, and big feet. His voice was big, his ego was big, and when it came to his ambition, it was bigger than big. His ambition was colossal. He wanted to be a great president, right up there with Washington and Lincoln. No, he wanted more than that. He said he wanted to be the greatest of them all, the whole bunch of them, of them. Johnson's dream was to wipe out poverty in America. He wanted to see blacks, whites, Hispanics, all people treated as equal citizens. He wanted old people to be cared for. He wanted no barriers to hinder the handicapped. He wanted every child in the country to get a good education. He wanted to see an America where all men and women are created equal. And he worked for those goals with more energy and, po and political savvy than any president before or since. He understood, as few have, that helping the poor and the disadvantaged would enrich the whole nation. Lyndon Baines Johnson came from Texas from the scruffy hill country near Austin, a region so isolated when he was a boy that no one had electricity at home, and almost no one had running water indoors or an indoor toilet. If you wanted to take a bath or do the dishes or wash clothes, you had to pump water from a well in the yard, carry it inside the house, and heat it over a fire. At the first school Lyndon went to, all the grades were in one room just with with just one teacher most of the children didn't wear shoes but the hill country people didn't think of themselves as poor they had food to eat and roofs over their heads and they knew and care about and cared about each other so up here it says ego means it it's a person's sense of self and this picture down here this is lyndon b johnson and he was a president with huge ambitions. And over here, Lyndon Johnson, five years old in this photo, grew up in a scruffy, isolated part of Texas. From the time he was a little boy, it was politics that fascinated him. That wasn't surprising. His mother was the daughter of a Texas Secretary of State. His father, Sam Ely Johnson, served in the Texas legislature. By the time Lyndon was six, he was attending political rallies and handing out pamphlets. When he was ten, he would go with his father to the legislator and sit in the gallery for hours watching all the activity on the floor. But when he was ready to go to college, his father was in debt. The family farm had failed. Lyndon borrowed $75 to help pay his expenses. After a year, he had to drop out and teach in order to earn money to finish. He taught Amer Mexican American children that year and saw real poverty, worse than anything he knew. He never forgot those children. Back at college, he got a job carrying trash and sweeping floors. He ended up working as an assistant to the college president, who later laughed and told him, You hadn't been in my office a month before I could hardly tell who was president of this school, you or me? When Lyndon Johnson graduated, the college president said, I predict for him great things in the years ahead, but he had no idea he was talking to a future president of the United States. Up here, this picture shows President Johnson as he poses in front of Junction Elementary, the one-room school he attended at Johnson City, Texas. The town was named for his ancestors. And over here, Johnson on the right was a member of the debate team at Southwest Texas State Teachers College. Down here, this caption over here says, Those LBJ initials were a family thing. The first lady was Lady Bird Johnson, and the president's daughters were Linda Bird Johnson and Lucy Baines Johnson.